As I said earlier on the um, Facebook page, I'm just going to do a really quick tutorial on using this cobbler's cream, which even though there's no endorsement involved here, um, I think it's better than colonial cream, which I know is a scary thing to say, but it's true. Um, I've been using this for absolutely years on all of my vintage style mulberry bags, vegetable tan leather, etc, etc. Um, this is my Cara bag, which I've purposely put a few scratches on, which isn't a good thing necessarily. And I don't own loads of mulberry bags. This is my toast vegetable tan leather bag, which also <clears throat> I've put a few scratches on just so that you can see the difference that this cream makes. So, as I said before, so quickly get cloth or something if you're sat on the stairs like me. Get a sock, a sock that you don't wear anymore, and obviously this is quite a nice sock, but this is just the best way to apply the cream. So, get your items, so get this one first. This is my beautiful car, which I've just got, and you can see there's kind of scratch marks on the leather. So just some regular scratches that this kind of leather seems to um, seems to get just from normal use, which is absolutely fine. It's all part of the charm of this kind of natural leather. I like the fact that it's not really coated and everything. Anyway, so this is this bag. This bag here, because I don't own loads of Mulberry bags, um, I've got my toast bag, which I use every day with the kids because I don't really care about it too much. This is a beautiful bag, but this I purposely scratched so that you can see how different it looks with, um, with cobbler's cream. Of course, I wouldn't purposely scratch my mulberry bag, apart from that tiny one. Okay, so you get the cream, sock on your hand, put your finger into a point, and get a little piece about that size on your finger. Then, you don't want to put a blob like that onto the bag because that will be too much. So what I always do is I get the blob, I get my fingers, and I kind of rub it between my fingers like that because that kind of distributes it evenly and it stops any lumps and bumps and it's no big lumps of cream. Obviously you take out all the stuff in and the stuff that's in your bag because you want to be able to get right, in, right inside. I've seen on a YouTube video before where a woman's got a bag all stuffed and she's got a big cloth and it, she just looks quite uncomfortable but you need to get right inside the bag which is why I use a sock like a glove because then you can get into all the nooks and crannies. So then, actually I just need a bit more than that. So you go to the area where the scratch is, you can see straight away that it's eliminating the scratch. If, you, if you've got a bit of an indentation, I tend to press a little bit harder, but what you have to do is just make sure you do it quickly. Don't go for one area and just keep rubbing that same area. You know, you can go back to it, but it's quite good to just apply it evenly. And I just keep on applying little blob size amounts. See here, there's a little scratch, which kind of goes into the corner, so you just Use one of your fingers inside the glove. You kind of concentrate on that bit. You can sort of feel it moisturising the leather at the same time, to be honest, which is nice. So get your hand right inside the bag so that you can hold on to it. Every time you get some cream on your hand, you must do this so you don't end up with a big blob because also the blob can get inside the stitching and that's really annoying. I, I try and avoid the stitching. But if you spread the cream out like this, it's fine because it doesn't tend to be white then so it doesn't make the stitching um, go white. So you just keep applying it into your fingers, all these little indentations here. You see that sort of looks white there, don't be alarmed by that because once it dries, they always, they always go for the corners as well, but once it dries it isn't white, it just kind of you know goes on that way. There's a little mark there, which is these, sadly these bags seem to get indentations from the handle, like with the basil, so which is a little bit annoying, but I can let it go to be honest. So just keep on going to all the areas where it looks a little bit, like it needs a bit of attention. So here there's a little indentation from this little loop. If you, if you kind of push into the indentation with the cream, it actually does almost get rid of it, but these ones here they're not going to go because they're quite deep from the handle. So you can see already that this is just looking much better. There's no scratches on that whatsoever now. Just check here, there's a few kind of little marks. So again, get, get the cream between your fingers, just work it in. And I've undone the buckles. See there's a bit of white cream which would be quite annoying if we got into the stitching, but you just kind of get it out. 
I've undone these, loosened these so that I can get into all the areas. If you find you've applied a bit too much, just go to a dry part of the sock and wipe it off a little bit and then kind of reapply. But you just want to do all this quite quickly. See, I'm an old pro at polishing bags, the way that I maneuver myself around, because I know some people are quite nervous. So that's that, and also it's quite good to go. So when you've got a sock on as well, it's also useful for handles, because then you can just you can just go like this along the handle. It's not, it's just easy, because sometimes the handle gets a bit of wear. Just be careful not to, I'm careful not to put the flap over there before I've rubbed off the polish, because I don't want it to get on the inside of the suede of the bag. So leave that one to dry a minute. Right, back to this toast bag. So this is just an unlined handmade leather bag. Just take my pouches out a minute. I just keep, because I'm a bit weird, I keep patches my keys and everything in. So then you can get your hand right inside the bag. So again, get a big blob on this one in particular because the grain is quite smooth. You can afford to go. So then you work it in. It's like moisturizing dry skin almost. Give it a bit of elbow grease. You can see there's lots of little dents on this and scratches. This is a lovely bag, I love this bag. It's, couple of hundred quid originally. I got it from the outlet shop next to the Mulberry shop in um, Shepton Mallet. I didn't even mean to go in to get one, but I just thought this is a bag that I can relax with a bit more. I do love my Mulberries, but I'm not so relaxed with them when I've got the children. So that's come up beautifully, that part there. I've still got to do the top part, the flap, which has still got scratches. that You can't sort of necessarily see that clearly. But the scratches are there so I put some more a little bit more cream on my finger but to be honest the sock has got quite a lot of cream in it now so you should if you press hard enough you should be able to get it to kind of come through this is a good bag actually for polishing because it goes out like one piece of leather so it's easy to get to and the good, good thing about the socks as well is that you can go into all the little bits like this which get forgotten you know if you have a big cloth it's just a bit cumbersome you can go and then you can go onto the edges so i'm this one i'm actually just going to buff up straight away because this is quite an easy to look after bag so i turn the sock over i don't know if you saw so that's the wet side this is the dry side all the bits i polished and there we go Beautiful, shiny bag, no scratches at all. So this bag now looks absolutely beautiful and new. I do love this bag. I know it's probably not to many of your tastes, but I love the fact that it's all natural and like, I like to see the leather. But anyway, I'm just showing you the finish. So here we go, there's that one. And now back to the beautiful Cara, which I haven't even used yet. I absolutely love this bag because I obviously it's pre-owned. Right. So you can see it's just slight matte finish where I've put the cream on. So now just give it a gentle rub in a circle with the dry side of the sock. Look at that beautiful luster you get from the natural uncoated levers. And also like, like I showed you before, so I turned the sock back around with the cream on it. This is it's just really, these sort of bags for instance, I mean it's got all these little details which are really beautiful but you need to get into all of them with the cloth. You can't just polish the bits you see, you need to kind of treat it all equally, otherwise you'll get dry bits on there, like with your skin really. So that's why, again, I know some of you joked about me using a sock, but now I'm sure you can see the logic behind it. So there's the flap, there's a little scratch on there. So that little scratch, I've just still got cream on my sock, my hands, so that little scratch there, just press quite hard, a bit for a second or two. And it's basically, Turn the sock over. And then go back to this part. And then the handles, which obviously I polished as well. So get it all back together. Take the sock off, get the cream lid, put it on, and then you can just keep it inside the sock and put it in the cupboard. The sock will dry, so perfectly 
useful for the next time. You can see how beautiful it looks. And I definitely never got this before, actually. Just got to buff that bit. Didn't do the edges. I know that this cream just works on all of these kind of, because it's like a natural cream. I think it's used for shoe soles originally, which are obviously untreated. So it's perfect for the natural leathers. Not on the, like I said, not on the um, coated grain leathers. You don't really need to put anything on those. Almost, you can almost use a cloth. Um, and just a spray protector, but these kind of levers need to just be um, moisturized, you know, from the outside in. They, that's, that's how you care for them, because they're like a natural skin. But there we go. Hope that was useful.